Biden, we need to shoot the finale episode. Yeah, coming, coming. Okay, come soon. Yeah. Let's do this? Yes. Hey everyone and welcome to the season finale of Love Beyond Words. Love Beyond Words is a series where we have married couples discuss topics and give perspectives on how you can make your marriage more awesome. This is the seventh and final episode of the season. If you would like to see snippets of what we have covered till now, here's a small highlights video for you. Identify our spouse's love language and speak to them or communicate love, uh, communicate how much we care and how interested we are in them by loving them the way they want to be loved. As spouses struggle to come out of our selfishness mm -hmm. and look at how I can serve my spouse. It's never too late. It's never too late to stop hurting, right? And to really make a choice to start loving. Loving your spouse with the language that they want to be loved. Finding ways to Yeah, love. finding ways to yeah. uh, The amazing chase, this amazing uh, uh, chase is all about chasing your spouse. The beauty of cleaving together means you know, to be joined together, you know, to be tightly bound, you know, sort of inseparables. The first step is, you know, to pray for one another. The next is to empower, empower one another, empower your spouse. Third is to say sorry, you know, and to be forgiving. The fourth is to um, express your love for one another. And the fifth is to enjoy one another's company. Every week with our heart to heart, we keep digging for new diamonds within our spouse. And in every conversation uh, that we have together, it's about discovering something new about each other. Don't give up, you know, keep pursuing and keep, keep coming back to your heart to heart. So the tip number one is to share your greatest joy of the week. Tip number two is to share your greatest struggle of the week. Tip number three is to share your uh, relationship with God, your time of prayer. Tip number four is to uh, share your affirmation uh, of your spouse. See, whenever we turn to God and told God, God, we are your children more than us. And you help us. You give us the wisdom to raise our children. And believe it or not, those years, though it was difficult, it, it was okay because God was with us. And we could help them grow in God's ways. Your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. Discipline just doesn't mean punishment or correction uh, or laying down rules. It also means teaching our children to be bring good order in their lives. Train up your children in the way they should go and when they are old, they will not depart from it. God who has given us children, He will see us through all that parenting years time because He says to us, if we focus on Him, He will bless not only us, but he will give us the wisdom to train our children in the ways of the Lord. Financial transparency is something that is very important. It is one of the cornerstones for a honest relationship. That we should not put a trust in money that is uncertain. We should put a trust only in God. It is God who provides us even that money. Saving is doing our part and when required God will do his part. Transparency and tithing. Spending and saving. Man and woman were never created to be compatible but they were created to be complementary. So it is natural for a marriage to have conflicts. No matter how difficult things and how difficult and challenging things have been for us we know that we are in this together and we are committed to work through it together. That little sacrifice of myself in the conflict has really built my marriage and our love for each other has grown immensely and tremendously. The victory that we have gained in giving up that little bit has been far greater. The most loving words in a marriage is I love you, yes, but the next is I am sorry. It's important to constantly remember that you love your spouse and your spouse loves you. And whatever you speak is meant to build your marriage and your relationship 
which is a far greater victory than merely winning a, a argument you can always watch the complete episodes their links are in the description below and if you're watching this episode along with your spouse do let us know in the comment section so before we go ahead to introduce our speakers for the evening let's invoke the lord in prayer the sign says in the name of the father and, and of the son and of the holy spirit, spirit. Amen. amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So for this episode, we are taking up a topic that we are sure many couples might be looking for direction. The relationship with in-laws. Ah, in-laws. I'm so blessed to have good ones. Are you really saying it or is it because they're also watching the video? No, I'm really saying it. Okay, that's so sweet. So our speakers for today have been married for over 40 years, are the proud parents of three children and the adoring grandparents of five. They are Tony and Maria Correa, who are full-time missionaries for MFC and are currently serving as coordinators for Africa. Yes, they have been an inspirational couple to us, and we are sure that this video will be inspiring to all of us. So let's get into it. Over to Tony and Maria. Praise be Jesus Christ. Thank you, Andrea and Byron. It's been great having you host Love Beyond Words. I'm Tony Correa, and here with me is Maria, my precious wife of forty years plus. We have been tasked today to share with you on a challenging topic. in-laws though many would uh, tongue in cheek call them outlaws with three children and four grandchildren not only have we had in-laws but in the usual course of life we ourselves have eventually become in-laws a word that was never really used in our families our son was the first grandchild on both sides of the family and so there were many demands from the grandparents who were our parents and in-laws while tony's in-laws wanted to see their grandson often my in-laws had wanted to name him after his ancestors as the tradition goes in goa they also felt that they should have a say in his upbringing since he carries their name It is not that we had not foreseen these potential tensions before our wedding we had discussed these things among ourselves and with our respective parents and in-laws we were clear we wanted to love and serve God to trust him completely and to live according to his promptings for our family believing that he had a special plan for us and for our children Before our wedding our in-laws had applauded our decisions but after we got married even though we lived away from them keeping to our decisions became points of pain discomfort and division such that the first 7 years of our marriage were indeed quite a rough time <coughs> Uh, for me relating with my in-laws was a cakewalk i was accepted as the eldest son in law as the son in the family uh, even though i had married the younger daughter out of turn an absolute no no in our culture in those days uh, my father in law took me into confidence in most of the family decision making uh, by but all this uh, did not mean that they did not want to get involved in how we should run our family <clears throat> uh on the other side i could see that maria was getting the brunt of my parents ire in most of the decisions that we were making the expectations plans ideas and words that my mom and dad were throwing at us were at times quite offensive 
and I tended to get very angry with them and would often <coughs> vow never to visit them again. Yet every time we returned to our own home after a visit, we would pray together, uh, forgive our parents and in-laws, pray for them and learn from the experience of what we could do different on our next visit. You can just imagine the additional pain of those who choose to live with their in-laws. I could see that Tony was getting upset that I was getting hurt. We were having to learn how to live independently and cope. In the process, we were making mistakes. Our in-laws on both sides could see the mistakes we were making. They wanted to get involved in the new family to spare us the heartaches. Their intrusive offers for assistance were being rejected and were causing much pain. On many occasions, we were able to avoid these conflicts by stating upfront that we would like their inputs on the decisions we were making, but we would prefer to bring these inputs to the table together with our own and finally make our own decisions. There were many times when we were so affected by the conflict and pain that we had to remember the verses Matthew 18.22 Forgive 70 times 7. <clears throat> Ephesians 6.22 Honor your parents. John 15.12 Love as I have loved you. These helped us keep our perspectives and cope. Our relationships with our in-laws improved over the years. They began to see the wisdom of how we dealt with situations in our life as a young family and even appreciated us for this, talking about us to other young couples. One of the things that helped us from the very beginning was to remember, firstly, Tony and I are a team, on the same side of any conflict, and yet not against our parents and in-laws. We were all one family, part of God's larger family. And with his help, we would have a win-win situation. Secondly, our parents were older, wiser, and so we should treasure their guidance as valuable. This worked out well for us as we learned to pray daily, talk to each other, help our children grow in their relationship with us and their grandparents, <coughs> to trust God to make things better for them and for us. Seeing our in-laws as our children's grandparents was the key to change in attitude. We would at this time like to invite a couple to share with us how they grew in their relationship with their in-laws after the usual initial hiccups. Over to Bangalore where we have a dashing young couple, Nelson and Tina. Thank you brother Tony and sister Maria. Hello all. I am Nelson and this is my wife Tina. We are married for six years and blessed with a daughter. We live in a joint family as I am the only son of my parents. I think it's quite na natural for Nelson's mother to be concerned about him. She wanted him to express that she still held the same place in his life as before. As a newly wedded couple, I wanted to be welcomed into the family. But it was quite the opposite. I didn't feel welcome, but rather I felt a deep sense of rejection. It was even more difficult because I was trying to show my family that everything was going on well with, uh, after the wedding. Nelson's mother did not want me to be part of any decisions about family and finances. When I conceived, things became even worse. Even though we lived in a joint family, everything was left to Nelson and I to manage. All that was very hurtful and unforgiveness started taking deep roots within me. We lost our baby after the delivery and within myself I blamed my mother-in-law for the loss. Whenever there was an argument between Tina and my mother, initially I used to try to balance my support between them but I was surprised by the outcome. It was a disaster. Then I decided that I will better 
keep silent and thereby allow them to settle things between them. This also was a very bad decision. Finally, I realized that I needed to stand beside my wife and be there for her. It's not that I need to say she's always right, but just to let her know that I'm there for her. After the loss of our baby, I was even angrier, frustrated and began to hate her. On the other side, I wanted to have a more intimate relationship with God. And I sensed God asking me to forgive her and reconcile with her. One day, I started praying for the courage to talk to her. A whole day I spent praying for the same purpose. Miraculously, next day I got a chance to talk to her. And we started with breakfast and went on till afternoon. I told her all the places I was hurt and I told her that I forgive her. She, I also asked for forgiveness for my mistakes. She forgave me and mm -hmm. said that she wanted to have good relationship with me. Since then, our relationship changed. Earlier, I used to hesitate to say anything. But ever since we reconciled, I have the courage to speak to her. In course of time, I understood that after our marriage, she probably felt the lack of Nelson's affection and assumed that I was influencing him. Even now things go wrong. Whenever I don't like what she says or does, I pray. I am weak, but my strength comes from God who is helping me in building my relationship with my in-laws and in turn with him. Praise be to God. Truly, I have no words to say what a blessing this has been. Earlier, I used to be really worried about Tina and my mother's relationship, but today, all that anxiety, worry has turned into joy, peace and happiness. Praise be to God. Over to you, Brother Tony. Thank you very much, Nelson and Tina. Your experience throws so much light on the struggles couples go through with their own in-laws. Having worked with many young couples as well as older couples gave us some insights on this whole issue. Tony's mother would come up with questions like, whose chapatis do you like, your wife's or mine? Or would come up with, now you're only listening to your wife. These are pointers that parents are now feeling they are no longer relevant in the lives of their children and that, that hurts them. In some way, their self-worth has been reduced in their own eyes and it leads them to bitterness, cynicism, resentment, anger, jealousy and sometimes even rage. <clears throat> I remember at such times I would quietly walk to the other room and begin to cry and pray. And Tony would say to his parents, It's our family, mummy, and if I don't stand by my wife, and we don't do things together, how will we grow in love and service? And how will our children see us as a team? I felt so loved and supported by my husband. Many heartaches were caused due to the fact that in-laws wished to leave a legacy for their children and grandchildren. But how they do this causes a lot of friction. The passing down of heirlooms from one generation to another, sometimes skipping a generation, the continuation of family traditions like Christmas, dinner with conflicting schedules, the handing down of recipes and the unique way certain dishes have to be prepared and there's no other way, the division of properties, the observance of many cultural practices, wanting their grandchildren to go to the same school that their children went to or maybe even they themselves went to and the naming of grandchildren. Issues such as these have been at the root of sibling rivalries besides poor relationships with in-laws. Though Maria was much loved and appreciated when I was dating her, uh, she wasn't that well accepted as my wife. There was an underlying feeling that she had taken my mom's place in my life. Um, Nelson and Tina shared a similar experience. This seems to be a common experience in many marriages. 
Here is where we as husbands need to learn the gentle art of stepping in and supporting our spouses without getting hooked into taking sides. Though if the situation gets toxic and our spouses are being attacked, we need to make it clear to our mums that yes, they will always have a special place of honour in our hearts and as such will be cherished and loved. But our wives now have the first place and we will always stand by them and be with them. A good mother will have raised her son according to God's word to be upright and God-fearing and in relationship with his spouse to leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and become one flesh. The young wife on the other hand has the onus of being respectful, loving, caring and forgiving. Being one flesh with one spouse means accepting and relating towards and treating one's parents just as one would one's own. And God's word calls us to honor and care for one's parents. I must say it gave me great joy to see my mom telephone my wife to come and take care of her when she was sick and later in the last few months of her life to so trustingly want to be cared for by Maria and finally dying in her arms. Indeed, it was a transformed relationship. As in-laws grow older and more insecure, more dependent and often less accommodating and fearful, uh, I'm sorry, uh, they become less accommodating and more fearful. Behind the modern craze for exercise, fads for diets and the search for the magic formula uh, that will restore youthfulness, there is this deep, unspoken and unacknowledged fear for death. In my own experience, if you talk about it, everyone around you asks you to keep quiet. It's taboo in society and you are avoided. Uh, so these are some of the reasons why relationships can become difficult. So what can you do to improve your relationship with your in-laws? Well, if you want to retain your sanity as a young couple, you need to keep a sense of humor. Don't uh, take things too personally and never forget uh, that your spouse always comes first after God. Beyond that, some advice, what I call a marching orders, that is O-R-D-E-R-S. The first letter is O, becoming one. Whether you live in a joint family or a nuclear family, the young couple is now a family of their own. They must become one, standing by one another, growing in unity to love and care for each other. Keep in mind what Jesus uh, taught us in Mark chapter 10 verse 7. Quoting, he quotes Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. He says, leave your father and mother Cleave to your wife and become one flesh. Uh, become one, one with your spouse. It is from the strength of this unity that you will build unity with your in-laws and then with your entire extended family. How do you do that? Begin by building a personal relationship with each one of them. Be friendly. Become a part of their family. Don't be aloof. Don't keep secrets from them. Get to know your spouse. Sorry, uh, get to know your them. And your spouse will help you get to know them better. Uh, don't try to change them. Remember, it takes time to build a relationship with them. The second letter is R. R is for responsibility. Uh, the responsibility to raise our family is upon us as a couple. So make the necessary decisions, uh, cope with the hardships and walk the way together. Uh, we may need help from our in-laws, but it's not their job. If necessary, get inputs from our in-laws, but take decisions as a couple. 
Where applicable, convey it lovingly to them. Taking responsibility also involves setting clear boundaries so that all know what is expected, thus no one takes advantage of one another. Today we have a special problem in this area. Young couples want old couples, uh, the parents and in-laws, to serve them as babysitters while they both go to work. Now this can often create problems in the area of how to raise the children. Grandparents often have a different set of rules from the parents and this can lead to conflict uh, often swept under the carpet because their services are required until one day an explosion occurs. In an ideal situation, grandparents should follow the rules of the parents. But this is realistic for short periods of time, you know, visiting, etc. In an ideal situation, grandparents shouldn't be raising grandchildren you know, long periods of time. Thus, an open dialogue is needed, approaches discussed in all honesty, and agreements which are realistic have to be made and evaluated from time to time. The subsequent points would then apply. We have finished O and R. Next we have D. D is for deal with issues. Deal with them rationally, objectively, immediately and above all lovingly and respectfully. Uh, sweeping issues under the carpet causes them to blow up and causing problems between the spouses and also between the younger and older couples causing everyone much pain. It's never, you know, we versus you. So don't get confrontational. It's about growing to love and care and serve one another, getting better over the years. We are God's one big family and our job is to reveal God's presence around us. So if it's, you are the best person to deal with it, you deal with it. If it's your spouse to deal with it, let your spouse deal with it. The fourth letter is E for excuse which is another word for forgive. Luke 17 verse 4 says forgive 70 times 7. It is not about feelings. It's not about waiting for them to accept their failings. It's about desiring to be reconciled in Christ and taking the first step to do so. Each time we are hurt, we need to come before the Lord seek his grace and healing and forgive our in-laws. Each time we have hurt our in-laws, we need to turn to them in humility and seek their forgiveness. Saying I'm sorry and I forgive you have become a way of life through practice. It's difficult but not impossible. Regular sacramental confession makes it much easier. The fifth letter is R, which stands for respect. Respect your in-laws. Deuteronomy 5 verse 16 tells us, Honor your father and mother. And this is one command that comes with a promise, a promise of blessings. Grant them the respect that you would expect your spouse to show your parents. You don't have to agree with everything they say and they do but honor them in the way you speak to them and treat them. Respect does not mean yielding to set boundaries. Now, as a mother-in-law, it was the turn of my daughter-in-law, Deborah, to enforce these boundaries. Once, while feeding my granddaughter her meal, she began to fuss. And I thought she had eaten enough and was prepared to call it quits. But her mother, who knew exactly how much she should eat, calmly said to me, Mom, I will handle it from here. And I willingly gave in. No offense meant, no offense taken. Another time when my son Joshua was correcting his daughter, I stepped in, feeling he was being a little hard on her. Grandparents usually are more lenient with their grandchildren. At this time, he felt free to enforce their disciplinary rules, saying to me, Mom, when did the rules change? Ouch. Another time when Tony stepped in to correct our grandchildren a little too strongly, our son-in-law, Sunit, was free to say, I do not like anyone else interfering just now, please. 
it was said and taken with great love firmly making the point that the responsibility for correcting the children lies with the parents respecting your in-laws means respecting their differences their position their authority and their opinions even when you cannot agree with them we would at this time like to invite a couple to share with us how their special relationship was with their in-laws over to bangalore where we have patrick and vinita thank you tony and maria uh, vinita and i are married for 12 years now and getting to a place uh, where we could start our lives together was a bit of a challenge um, her parents were a little nervous uh, since i come from a family of 10 siblings and me being the youngest one and everyone else already married there were enough and more in laws uh, to build and maintain relationship um though there was this initial uh, resistance from my in laws uh, but that we didn't really actually let that come away and now for me personally they are my go to people uh, whether it be good or bad i reach out to them to discuss to share uh, to consult to pray i look up to them for everything um uh, when we got married uh, we also decided uh, since we are also marrying into each other's families Uh, we will honor our in-laws at the way we will honor our own parents uh, having said that uh, we were also very clear in our mind uh, what it entails uh, to honor and not um, though there was this uh, initial fear of getting into a big family mm-hmm. it slowly transformed into great joy uh, as i got to know each of them personally so much so i started to look forward to occasions to being around them and it is always a great fun to gather as one big family to celebrate at the same time be there for each other when faced with challenging situations but we have never let relationships deter us from living up to the value we believe even if be to say a firm no to superstitious practices which were traditionally followed over the years we have realized sometimes the most honoring response is to diplomatically but firmly say no uh, since we've been consistent in prioritizing each other it has left little room for any unnecessary attempts to influence either one of us in having a peaceful relationship with pat's mom it has been a great joy to see our children learn how to honor and help her when she is in need my parents uh, live in a different uh, city but they have been more than willing to take the trouble to come for every major milestone of our children and we have been blessed to have them present this is not to say that uh, there hasn't been a bumpy ride um, given that my mother stays with us uh, i have uh, seen uh, vinita really take care of her um by making those sacrifices each day it is not easy uh while managing three young kids uh, especially during a time like this uh, when all of us are at home there are moments where everyone needs to be attended uh, i have seen personally how vinita deals with my mother with love and respect uh, for which i am uh, very grateful One of the things that we try to practice is that while quality time with husband and uh, children are important, we also realize that to give quality time with in-laws is equally important. So ever since uh, my father-in-law passed away, I've uh, I've made this conscious effort to spend a good quality time by picking up conversation on topics that interest my mother-in-law, uh, talk to her and keep her engaged uh, so that she'll have a hearty laugh over it. And this is one of the key um, um, important uh, thing that has helped my relationship with my mother-in-law going. And um, one golden rule we follow in our marriage is never to let our differences be known to our in-laws. but make every effort and resolve quickly it is imperative that husband and wife stand for each other when it comes to facing challenges posed by in laws at the same time we also we been able to share our heartaches with each other only to be consoled and encouraged to continue joyfully in the journey that god has united us over to you tony and maria 
Thank you, Patrick and Vinita, for that lovely sharing, which so beautifully introduces my next point. We have so far covered O, R, D, E, R. The next letter is S. S for serve. Serve one another and help out with things that matter to them. While early in our marriage, our in-laws came to our help in different ways, soon it was our turn to help them and eventually we lived close to our in-laws so that we could be of help to them in their growing needs as aging parents. They learned to rely on us and take advice from us and ask for help too in small mundane things as shopping for them, helping around the house and even in big things like their medical care. Decision making for our aged parents became our responsibility in a major way as they aged. Life has taken a full circle and today we look to our children and their spouses to do the same for us. On way to serve in-laws and build their sense of worth is to celebrate with them. Visit your in-laws regularly, however inconvenient. Organize celebrations with them around the large dinner table. Picnic with them. Have musical fiestas with them. Family reunions like these are reminders to the older generation that the flame of love and life they have lived lit up in their family will not be extinguished but will burn brightly even after they have gone. To conclude, it might help to redefine our in-laws as the grandparents of our children. That is their defining identity. They revel in it and if we value it, we may learn to cherish them and value them as our own children today cherish and value us. Summarizing what we have learned, in-laws struggle with their sense of self-worth. They believe they have much to offer but fear their children and grandchildren do not appreciate what they have to offer. Loneliness, ill health, death stare them in the face. So how can we build our relationship with our in-laws? The word to remember is orders, O-R-D-E-R-S. O, strive to be one with your spouse and with your in-laws. R, exercise responsibility as a couple, making the necessary decisions and setting clear boundaries. D, deal with issues rationally, objectively, immediately and above all, lovingly and respectfully. E, excuse or forgive your in-laws and one another. R. Respect your in-laws. S. Serve your in-laws and celebrate with them. It's been great being with you today. Be blessed. All glory to Jesus. Over to you Andrea and Byron. Thank you so much Tony and Maria for that wonderful session. I think it has given us a lot of perspective of how to deal with these relationships and to understand that our extended family have their own insecurities and that we as members of the family uh, you know, need to be there for them while respectfully maintaining our own autonomy in decision making. Thank you also Nelson and Tina, Patrick and Vinita for sharing your lives. Um, I really like the fact that we have this acronym ORDERS um, that you know, uh, helps us remember how to deal with our in-laws, right? And also the fact that, uh, as they mentioned, to celebrate with our in-laws, which I think a lot of times we tend to miss out on. So um, we really hope that you've enjoyed this session as much as we did. Uh, and we look forward to hearing your takeaways in the comments. We want to thank each one of you who have been viewing and encouraging us with your messages every week. Thank you for sharing these videos and helping other couples improve their marriages. Putting this all together would not have been possible without the people behind the scenes. A special shout out to the production team of Kelvin Castellino, Ian Di Norona and Basil Rodriguez and to the social media team of MFC India who helps promote this far and wide. Thanks to all the speakers and sharers across episodes. 
and bringing all these great couples together would have not been possible without the help of the elders of the MFC community. They have been a constant source of support and guidance to all of us. Keep sharing and spreading the word. Don't forget to like this video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channels to get more content that will enrich your spiritual lives. If you found the series helpful and would like us to do a season two, let us know in the comments what topics you would like to hear about. And with this, we come to the end of this season of Love Beyond Words. We really hope it has been an enriching journey for you, just as it was for us. We thank and praise God for the opportunity to host this series for you. So that's it. And that's us wrapping it up. Stay, Stay safe. safe. Good, good night. night and, and God, God bless. bless. I really, really love season one. Yeah, me too. And you've been doing the dishes too. Hopefully by the next season, you'll help fold the clothes as well. Fold the clothes? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs>